Let's now move back to our top story. Shepherd Boshiri says justice will prevail. The Lilongwe Magistrates Court has ordered the release of Shepherd and Mary Boshiri. The two handed themselves over to Malawi authorities on Wednesday morning. It's now emerged the couple's arrest was illegal. And I'm joined now by their lawyer, Wapona Kita. Thank you very much for joining us. Lovely to chat to you again, Mr. Kita. Could you explain to us how you secured their release in Malawi? Well, uh, what happened is that uh, there were two applications today before the court. There was an application by the state to continue their detention, and then there was an application on behalf of the Bushiris to have them released unconditionally. So both applications were heard side by side. We, we were arguing before the court that their arrest was illegal because there was no authority from the minister to proceed with the extradition proceedings. On that basis, the arrest was illegal and the court agreed with us. When you say no authority from the minister, are you talking about the minister in Malawi? Yes, the minister of home affairs is supposed to issue an authority to proceed once they have received a request for extradition. So what transpired in court, what, what we are served with, shows that the South African government has made the, the request for the provisional arrest pending the request for extradition. So we are saying there is nothing like a provisional arrest under our rules. It is illegal to provisionally arrest someone. Even that provisional arrest, you needed the authority of the minister. So that authority of the minister was lacking. So the arrest was illegal, and that's why I was saying we don't even have to be, have to be applying for bail but for the unconditional release of the illegal arrest. All right, so I spoke to our Justice Minister a little earlier, and he told us uh, that it is part of the SADC treaty that you can make or you can apply for the provisional arrest, and then you've actually got 30 days to finalize it. Um, but I'm, I'm guessing that didn't come up in court. Yeah, you're right. That was the, the SADC treaty was not part of the arguments in court. The argument was the, the extradition treaty between South Africa and Malawi, not the SADC treaty. There is a bilateral treaty. All right. So that, that is what we are talking so, so, Mr. Kita, what do you expect? First of all, where are your clients this evening? Are they home? Yes, they are, they are, they are home right now. I talked to them a few minutes ago. They told me that they have reached home. All right. Um, do they have to stay in Malawi, or are they free to move to another country at this point if they want to? Well, that, that would be up to them. I cannot decide for them, but... Uh, Legally I'm speaking. Them, it is not their intention to leave Malawi. I know, but what I'm trying to find out is, is there any legal bar to stop no, them? No, 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 no. There is no legal bar. The, 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 the release is without any conditions. If, if it was with a condition that don't leave the wrong way, or, or, or report to the police fortnightly, yes. But as far as I could, they've walked away with no condition at all. So they can go there, but they want to go. All right. If they want to. We did speak um, about the fact that um, they have diplomatic status. Is that correct? No, that issue was not raised, and uh, it's not part of our, it was not part of our arguments, so I cannot comment on that one. Are you expecting the South African authorities to make another application to have your clients extradited? And if so, what would the next step be? I, I do expect that, because the documents which were furnished to us is that they intend to make an extradition request. We don't know for when, when, when that will be, but... Uh, that has been made clear that uh, they, they intend to make that extradition request. So we are on the receiving end. As it is, we will wait to be served with the summons to go to court and attend, and attend to the extradition proceedings. All right. Um, if indeed that does happen, um, the, the fact that we understand, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that your clients have diplomatic status in Malawi, is that correct? I have not pursued that line of uh, discussion with my clients, so I, can, I cannot comment on the, uh, them having a diplomatic or not having a diplomatic status and what are the consequences. All right, because our understanding, and you obviously know Malawian law a lot more than me, but what we understand about Malawian extradition law is that if you have diplomat, uh, a diplomatic passport, you will not be extradited from Malawi unless you're accused of murder uh, or treason in another country. Is that correct? I'm not aware of that law. I've not researched on that one. Okay. Um, the other issue, and we know that um, Shepard Bushiri raised 
uh, the, there were two attempts on his life, uh, on his account. He said the authorities in South Africa did nothing about it. He said there were two attempts on his life in South Africa. Would the courts, and I'm obviously asking a lawyer to speculate, which I know you hate to do, but would the courts in Malawi be reluctant uh, to extradite a Malawian citizen who says they fear for their life in that country? Well, I think for now I will be preempting because even the magistrate today, what, what, what he said was he, he does not want to discuss the events in South Africa. Today we were looking at the, the legality and illegality of, of the arrest. So perhaps the, the matter has just started. Those are the issues perhaps we should be looking into as, as, as time goes by. And we will we, we'll be able to marry how those arrests uh, affect the right to fair trial for him in, in, in South Africa. All right. So it seems in a way that your clients have been released on a technicality. Um, I would imagine, bearing in mind the urgency with which the South African authorities are treating this, that there could be a next step. Um, how are you advising your clients at this point? Well, uh, unless they appeal, but what, what the magistrate has ordered is that uh, should there be a next move from the, the South African government, the Bushiris are not supposed to be arrested again. They are simply supposed to be asked to be summoned to appear, to, to appear before the court on the appointed day. So I, I think the issue of them being arrested again is out of question now. They, when they're wanted by the court, they will, they will appear before the court, not through an arrest. Are you suggesting <laughs> that the extradition attempt may be dead in the water already? No, 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 no. Because while the, the, the extradition request has not been made, it's, the request which was made was for, for provisional arrest. So I'm pretty sure the South African government will be making the, the extradition request because the state they was asking for 30 days. So we, I should assume that within those 30 days, they will have received the, the official, the formal extradition request from South Africa. So when that happens, we'll be notified and we'll, we'll, we'll defend, those are the instructions which we have, we'll defend the extradition request. So the Bushiris are home tonight. Um, are they free to go about their business, hold church services as they normally would and so on? I, I guess so, they, they should be able to. All right. But what I can confirm is this, they are home tonight. All right. Well, thank you so much for chatting to us. We really do appreciate it. That, of course, was Wapona Kita. He is a legal expert, um, but, of course, also he's representing the Bushiris in Malawi.